So I'm just gonna make uh, another little video here. Uh, just screenshot, so. So here's another one where I just, uh, how I was able to man manipulate the clouds. Uh, the government distorted the, the dubbing on it. So when I was talking and my lips, they weren't synchronized to try to skew this evidence. But anytime there's fluffy clouds, there's fluff, where is it? Down here. There's fluffy clouds like that. Uh, and there's a contrast background. I could prove in person at your expense, my convenience. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. I did it from it. I did it in Canada on the airplane back from Denmark. I did it in Denmark. So I'd be able to prove this anywhere in the world. And so I'm just looking. So now if you flip your phone sideways, you can see, I guess right there, this part right there, it looks like a subliminal face right there. When you look at it sideways. So that's a side note. So I'm just gonna show you why I'm uh, the true king. So here is Edward VIII. He abdicated the throne for Wallace Simpson he, uh, he was an American celebrity, but I believe, actually, I'm gonna find out right now. I didn't check this out, I wanted to, but I speculate that he uh, abdicated the throne shortly before television was invented, like is poss possibly known by the spies. And uh, why? Well, uh, maybe I did check this out. I forget the results. But I think, uh, I think he, the television would have been known to the public or either it was in development most likely anyways before he abdicated because uh, if my family would have seen how much we looked like the kings we would have been able to uh, challenge the throne possibly right so he most likely abdicated the throne to divert my family's attention and I'll show you so let's see Okay, nine, According to BBC, okay, so on the 11th of December 1936, unable to reconcile his desire for U.S. divorcee Wallace Simpson with his role as king, Edward VIII made the shocking decision to abdicate the throne, bringing an end to a crisis that tested the boundaries of duty, love, and the monarchy itself. So that it could have been possibly. Okay, so the 7th of September, 1927, according to Wikipedia, on the 7th of September, 1927, U.S. inventor Philo Farnsworth's image dissector camera tube transmitted its first image, a simple straight line, at his laboratory at 202 Green Street in San Francisco. By the 3rd of September, 1928, Farnsworth had developed the system sufficiently to hold a demonstration for the press. Okay, so he abdicated after television was was known right so the, once again this is what he looked like I'll show you what I looked like when I was a younger anyways there's what there's what I look like now I'll show you what King Charles looked like at the same age basically not even close to fucking Edward VIII not even close and I'm even related to Sun Tzu. You see Sun Tzu, I'm even related to Sun Tzu. Even related to Marcus Aurelius. Related to Captain, or uh, Field Marshal Colin Campbell, who I believe had kids with, with uh, Queen Victoria, if not one of her kids. And Captain James Cook, who I look like, who discovered uh, Australia, I believe had kids with uh, Charlotte of Mecklenburg Strelitz. And I'm a descendant of that, that line. And uh, my DNA map, I'll try to show you here. 
Here's my king's DNA. And you can see how those telomeres are missing. That means I shouldn't age. I shouldn't have aged past maturity. I probably should have looked about 25 years old and that was about it. They're editing my telomeres, so restricting it on the system. Uh, them ever editing, editing my telomeres and hacking the system to try to discredit me. So prevent them from hacking the system to discredit me. But the, these telomeres in this region, these are the king's DNA. So I would have the same DNA as, as uh, the acting kings and emperors and sultans on the planet, but I would have a higher concentration of it. And here is my DNA map. Anywhere where there's non-white, I have ancestral relations to, and I would have claims to any thrones that fall under those lands.